This is a more potent version of Serapeptis, and it goes with a more potent version of the price. And what this does is it's basically for your circulatory system in your heart. It can also be used for if you have some deep scar tissue that's bothering you from, um, I don't know, it could be an old injury that you possibly had or an operation. Uh, the Serapeptis, which is an enzyme from the Japanese silkworm that they secrete to dissolve the cocoon when they exit, that, ser that serapeptis enzyme, when it goes throughout the blood, will dissolve dead tissue. And where that's useful is this. It can um, dissolve dead tissue that's clogging up your arteries, such as liquid plumber, but not. I should not give that quite the, uh, the analogy as liquid plumber, because liquid plumber can be damaging to your pipes, right? Well, in the case of serapeptis, it doesn't even harm one living cell. So in other words, the um, enzyme secreted by the Japanese silkworm that comes out of its cocoon will dissolve the hard shell, the hard cart cocoon that protects it, and it's very, you know, it's it's um, the worm is, you know, is an infant worm, and the secretion of this enzyme can't harm something as delicate as the uh, Japanese silkworm that's being hatched out of the. Uh, cocoon at the time. It does not even harm one cell. So it's something, I don't know exactly how it works chemically, but the way they um, have manufactured this pill is that the pill is coated. So you do not want the stomach acids attacking the serapeptis enzyme when you take this pill. You also want to take it on an empty stomach, preferably in the morning, and I guess it could be at night too if you're if you hadn't had any meal in a long time but you want to take it on an empty stomach this way the secretions of your stomach acid are not high they're at a very low level the coating on the pill allows the um, enzyme to pass through the stomach and go into the small intestines whereby the serapeptis is then absorbed into the bloodstream then it goes throughout the bloodstream and it does its magic whereby it dissolves like uh, problems that could be plaque build up inside the arteries. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> there could be several types of things that actually build up in the veins and arteries. And there's several things you can actually do to minimize that. Um, I know one of the biggest myths out there is that when they talk about cholesterol, you know, causing a build up in the arteries or causing heart disease. That's not true. Absolutely, the, you know what? You can actually look for the common sense proof for that. Not being a, that cholesterol doesn't really harm your heart and your circulatory system is the fact that if you go look at the levels of cholesterol in the natives in Alaska, they're sky high. They're over 300 uh, levels of cholesterol because they have um, diets high in blubber of whales and and uh, seals and things like that, and. Um, <coughs> they have a, almost a zero incidence of heart disease. Actually, cholesterol is very much needed for your brain function. So if you take things to lower cholesterol, it could lead to dementia. Of course, doctors won't, I don't know, I don't know, why they, I don't know how much they're aware of this or what, but you know, there's a nutritional side of study and then there's a side of study that benefits the pharmaceutical companies, right? <laughs> so there's two different sides of looking at, you know, what's the best, best method. Sometimes it's very much financially motivated. Now, what I do with these, uh, taking these dosages, I wanted to take, see, this is a 20,000 units dose. This is a 120,000 units dose. So it's six times more powerful. Of course, it comes with a more, you know, healthy price tag too. You know, it's, it's, it's far more up there in price, but it's still not that much money. This was only like five ninety nine. dollars I think this was under 30 bucks. It was like 20 something dollars. So it's not that much. And you don't need to do this every day. Um, what I particularly, what I do usually is I take it for about 30 days. Then I stop taking it for two or three months. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's not something I take 365 days a year. So I just take it once in a while for a period of time and then that's it. Um, now there are several ways actually that um, plaque builds up or uh, clogging in the arteries happens or you know blockages in the heart happen you know part of it is, is could be from calcium calcium but 
you know, it's not that simple to just to say calcium causes a blockage in the arteries or the heart. It's actually a lack of K2 because vitamin K2 uh, tells the calcium to go into the bones and teeth. If you take a lot of calcium and you do not have enough vitamin K2, then the calcium can build up in your veins and your heart and cause a blockage. It's not simply just taking too much calcium. It's actually a lack of vitamin um, uh, K2. And if you take a lot of vitamin D, vitamin D will cause the calcium to be synthesized. I think I don't know if that's the correct word. And you can also have that problem with the blockages, right? So if you if you take a lot of vitamin D, you definitely want to take a lot of vitamin K2 along with it. Okay, that's uh, actually one of the big uh, secrets to French health because like a lot of their diet has a lot of vitamin K2 in it from the cheeses that they eat because it's found in fermented cheeses or you could just buy a supplement from like Dr. Carlson or something like that which is relatively inexpensive because I think I forgot how many pills are in one of those things. It's, it lasts a long time. I remember that. It's probably a $30 supplement but it's got a lot of, I think it's 300 pills in there. Um, the other thing is um, the synthesis of protein could build up um, a type of homocysteine in the blood, in the, actually in the, in the arteries, excuse me, in the arteries. And what can lower that is TMG, trimethylglycine. Uh, it's TMG, it's trimethylglycine. Tr trimethylglycine will actually lower the homocysteine levels in the blood and turn homocysteine into dimethylglycine, which is a performance enhancer. enhancer. Answer. So that's another little tip, but you don't need to be doing all that because I, I might be confusing people too much with this. Um, the one thing that actually lowers the homocysteine in the blood sometimes too works pretty well is vitamin C. Add uh, more higher do higher doses of vitamin C than they would recommend, like at least a few thousand uh, milligrams of it a day. I take way more than that. I actually take thirty thousand milligrams, and I'll take uh, NAC with it, N-acetylcysteine, which works well with uh, vitamin C and selenium and zinc. But you know, just to keep it simple, sometimes uh, your veins and your arteries could be building up this plaque, despite all these different things you think you're doing. That you know, because you really can't go in there with a microscope. Or maybe they could go in there with a microscope and examine things. And here's my little cat, right? See, little cat. Little cat Goldie, what are you doing? Hey, say hi to the camera. Well, you could examine, you know, a, a professional doctor could go inside your, um, you know, and look, look inside your heart and all this, but you're not going to be doing that so on a regular basis. So on a regular basis, what I do is, um, you know, I go ahead and do this uh, thing with the Serapeptis. So, little Goldie. Hi, little Goldie. You, you, maybe you need that too, huh? Look at him. And you know why I call him Goldie, right? He's gold. <laughs> Look at that little face. You cute little meow meow, aren't you? Aren't you, huh? Him and Rocky, looking for treats all the time. I just hope those treats are okay for your heart, little buddies. Anyway, if not, we're going to give you a little Serapeptis someday. Maybe I'll have to look that up and see how if that works with Mr. Katz. Right? Look at that face, man. You can't, you can't beat that cat for nothing, for cuteness, huh? Right? <laughs> He's a good guy. Playful little cat. Anyway, going off on the cat video here. So, I uh, actually, yeah. And um, so, just want to say that, you know, you might want to take the higher dosage of uh, Serapeptis. I was taking the lower dosage, and I was, sometimes I was taking two or three pills. And I said to myself, because I realize there's a lot of different dosages out there. You know, sometimes they're 20,000 units, sometimes they're 50,000 units, 100,000 units. This was 120,000 units, so the high potency from Best, whatever the hell that is. I don't know what the hell brand that is. I don't sell for them or nothing. I'm just saying that's right. And I got that from Swanson Vitamins. I don't know if they're, they're pretty good, but I don't sell for them or nothing. They're just one of my favorite places to buy. Are you Mr. Goldie? Anyway, over and out, so I figured I'd throw you some tidbits here with some stuff I'm doing, and uh, we'll be having more here in the future pretty soon. Oh, see, you know when he's squinting like that? You know what that means? People don't notice, but when a cat squints like that, that's a sign of affection, believe it or not. People don't read that because they think like a human does a squint, 
it's like they're being squinty or something. When a cat does that, that's a sign of affection. See, he came over to say hi. That's what he did. Right, Goldie? You're a good cat. 